This video is sponsored by Policy Genius. More on them later. If you're anything like me, then you know peanut butter is love. Peanut butter is life. Peanut butter is happiness. Now I'm talking about the good stuff here, not that hydrogenated no-stir garbage. When you first open a jar, it's so creamy and delicious. Oh yeah. Oh boy. But after a few weeks, the oil can separate out again and it leaves you with the crummy dry stuff on the bottom. I set out to solve this problem by harnessing the powers of science and innovation. My idea was to keep the jar in motion at all times to prevent the peanut butter from having time to separate. Now at first you'd think this is really easy. Just put it in a rock tumbler and call it good, but that would be too noisy to keep in my kitchen. The next obvious approach is to use a stepper motor to slowly turn the jar, but it turns out this would actually not work because the switching frequency of the stepper motor would resonate at the natural frequency of the jar and cause the thiamine proteins to form a covalent bond with the amino acids. Simply put, this would cause the peanut butter molecules to accelerate their decomposition process and turn into petroleum sludge. So to avoid this, we need a more novel type of motor that can run at lower RPM. This is why I decided to build a solenoid engine. Solenoid engines work like normal engines, except they use an electromagnet to move the piston instead of explosions. When you run an electric current through a coil of wire, a polarized magnetic field is formed. This would cause a magnet to get pulled to one side. If you reverse the polarity of the coil, the magnet will get pulled to the middle. You can see this concept in action here. By switching the polarity back and forth, I'm able to get the magnet to move back and forth in the cylinder. Now let's take this concept and apply it to an engine. I designed all the cranks, gears, frame, and shafts in CAD, and then 3D printed it all on my CR-10. The first iteration of the cylinders utilized plastic syringes wrapped in copper magnet wire. In order to get enough torque to spin a large peanut butter jar, it utilizes a 28 to 1 gear reduction. It spins an aerospace grade 25mm high modulus carbon fiber tube that the peanut butter jar rests on. The whole design took a fair amount of trial and error to get right. At first, I was hoping I could get away without using a flywheel and just do clever cylinder timing, but this turned out not to work. So I eventually added a big heavy steel cylinder. Peanut butter, 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 peanut butter. In order to synchronize the electromagnet switching with the rotation of the crankshaft, I used an AS5047P Hall effect encoder. When paired with an Arduino, this gives you an exact readout in degrees of the crankshaft position. Due to the location of the cranks, I couldn't mount the magnet on the end of the shaft, so I had to offset it on separate gears that spin at the same rate as the crankshaft. Thanks to Starbond CA for hooking me up with the glue for this project. To switch the power on and off to the coils, I started off with two L298N dual H bridge modules. Now let's talk about what makes this solenoid engine different than most. Most solenoids only move the magnet back and forth through one side of the coil. When the polarity is one way, the magnet moves to one side, and when the polarity is the other way, the magnet moves to the middle. The engine I built has a much longer stroke than most solenoid engines have. This is because I'm taking advantage of both sides of the coil. When power is applied to the coil, the magnet moves either to the middle or the edge, depending on the polarity. This means the range of motion can either be here or here, but not both. However, we can take advantage of both sides of the coil by using the momentum of the engine to push the magnet through the center of the coil, which is a dead zone, to the other side. When the magnet is in a dead zone, we can turn off that coil and wait for the magnet to exit the dead zone on the other side. Then we can apply power to the coil again and push the magnet all the way through. There are three dead zones in the piston stroke. The dead zones are the end locations where the magnet would end up moving to, assuming it were unconstrained. When the magnet is in one of these zones, it is being held in place by that coil. We never want this to happen while the engine is running. We want the magnet to always be pushed or pulled, so whenever the magnet is near a dead zone, the coil is turned off. 
The active zones are where we can control the force on the magnet and the direction of that force by changing the polarity. To be honest, I have no idea if the long stroke method is actually any better since I've never built a normal one. I went with the long stroke version because I felt like it might have a bit more torque with lower crank speeds. This is because the lever arm of the crank is longer. Here's some footage of my first few attempts at getting it to run. Don't worry about it. It's trying. It's going a little bit. I'll turn it up a bit more, huh? Oh, you're gonna burn these out. They're gonna get so hot. No, they're fine. They're fine. They're getting pretty toasty. Oh, it's going. It's going. <laughs> wow, look at those cereal bits going. Big thanks to Policy Genius for sponsoring this video. Life insurance can be burdensome to deal with, but it's really important, especially if you have family members that depend on your income. Luckily, Policy Genius has created an online insurance marketplace where you can get personalized quotes from top insurance companies in minutes. They also make it extremely easy to apply online and even get unbiased advice from Policy Genius experts. Sometimes my lifestyle ends up being a bit more on the risky side. That's why I signed up with Policy Genius, and now I can rest easy knowing they'll be taken care of. You can save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. It's really a no brainer. Save yourself the hassle of getting quotes from numerous individual life insurance companies. Policy Genius makes everything easy by consolidating the process so you can spend more time eating peanut butter. You could save $1,300 or more per year by using Policy Genius to compare life insurance policies. Visit policygenius.com slash rctestflight to shop the market and start saving today. Oh, these are going to fall off. My bolts are, are not bolted cut? in. No, the, the coils won't get hot at all. Oh, it's that's just, they're fine. Let's turn it up. It's, they're pretty hot. Oh, shit. Oh! <laughs> tiny bit more. Tiny bit more juice. Maybe we cooked some of these. Yeah, they're fucking hot. Turn that off. They're, I think we cooked them. I don't think we cooked anything. Oh, those are really hot. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I guess I could give it a little bit more volts, huh? Yeah, do it. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna juice it up real quick and let these uh, heat sinks cool down. Sick. That's full power on the power supply. It's 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 going. Oh, it's slowly it's going. slowing down. Wow, they got really hot really fast. After that, we found an Arduino relay shield and tried it out instead of the little stepper motor drivers. Oh, that's so good. Oh boy, here it goes. Okay, I'm gonna turn voltage down first. Oh, it seems to be wanting to go backwards. Oh, it's going backwards. Wow. Why that's... is it going? Oh, the polarity is probably reversed. Ha, <laughs> sick. Let's plug it on the battery. No, then we're gonna break it. No, it's gonna be fine. Let's do it. I'll just go get my 10 amp power supply. Are you ready? Yeah, got 10 amps now. More juice. Oh! Sick! Wow! <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. So good. <laughs> that's fantastic. I think for the final product, though, I'm gonna want something a little bit quieter so that it can run you in the really kitchen. You need to polish this thing. <laughs> I need to probably put some <laughs> petroleum jelly in there. Oh, just touching it makes it stop. There's a lot of power that's wasted. Oh, geez, those are hot. Really? Yeah, it's probably the resistance that just went up from the temperature. It's that much, yo, yeah, whoa. We don't want to melt the plastic. I'm now realizing that a 90 degree offset on the cranks might not be ideal because there are points in the revolution where both pistons are off. So maybe like a 45 degree offset or a 130 degree offset or something would be better than a 90 degree offset. Set. I'm not sure. After that, I switched over to BTS 7960H bridges that were rated for quite a bit more power. These ended up working great. See this peanut butter? Very oily. Not good. Bad. We gotta fix it. Got a robot. A robot's gonna fix it. Come on, baby. A little more. A little more. Yeah, we're chooching now. Now is the moment of truth. We'll put the peanut butter on the roller and see if it stalls the engine. Woo! There it goes! Now we'll just let it run and see if these coils melt because they're getting toasty. I, I thought I, I saw a smell hole. something. Yeah, maybe we should pause and check the temperatures. Oh, that's too hot to touch. It's real toasty. Ow! Go get it. Is there science? Or is there weed? 
Oh, it's melting. Oh, now it's fusing together. <laughs> so fun. I clearly needed some cylinders that could handle a bit more heat since my plastic syringes were melting. In hindsight, I should have made them out of brass or some other non-ferrous metal. I ended up trying carbon fiber tubes because it was what I had laying around. The carbon performed better, but the coils were still getting super hot and probably would have eventually melted through their enamel and started shorting out. I tried putting fans directly in front of the coils, but this didn't help much. In the spirit of putting a band-aid on a band-aid, I decided to implement a water cooling system. I 3D printed some little reservoirs that would hold water around the coils. To make them watertight, I encapsulated the whole things in silicone sealant. All this ended up being too heavy, and they were starting to wear out the plastic connecting rods. In the spirit of putting a band-aid on a band-aid on a band-aid, I used rubber bands to offset the weight by pulling on the cylinders. This worked perfectly. Despite the gobs of silicone, my cylinders were still leaking, so in the spirit of putting a band-aid on a band-aid on a band-aid on a band-aid, I simply cut some grooves in the wood for the water to run off into the reservoir pot. Problem solved. At this point, the engine was still a bit underpowered, even when I was running it at high voltages. This was because I previously had shortened the pulse periods in an attempt to make it more efficient. After widening the pulse periods back up to take advantage of the full active stroke range of the solenoid, the engine had plenty of power. I even had to turn the power supply down to 6 volts to prevent it from running too fast. To run at a steady speed, it takes between 35 and 40 watts. Not exactly efficient, but hey, it just helps heat and humidify your house. Over the course of a few hours, it raised the temperature of the water in the cooling reservoir by about 13 degrees Fahrenheit. Insert montage. Solenoids moving in and out. They're liquid cool, so they don't melt. Forty watts is all it takes to homogenize the peanut butter. It really does a great job of keeping the peanut butter mixed. A real must-have kitchen appliance. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye. That's it. That's it. Nice and slow. Nice and creamy. Oh yeah.